Okay, guys, I'm going to my buddy's house real quick to bail him out. He's got like an early 2000s camper. It's a Ford engine. I think it's 6'8", pretty big one. I'm just taking the Phoenix with me and my U-scope. We suspect we have a secondary ignition issue, a coil breaking down. Let's see what we find. So it's my mom's next door neighbor, this camper right here. We've known them for a long time. He's my electrician buddy. He scratches my back all the time. I got to scratch his. Uh, but yeah, this is where I grew up right here. You guys have been following along. My mom's got cancer and she's been battling it for five years and we've been taking care of mom. You see the nice porch we built for her, put a new roof on the house. And man, was that huge during COVID for her being a cancer patient and being on chemo. She's doing good though. Um, you know, Lord willing, she'll be with us for many more years to come. But uh, yeah, this, this is my home. This is where I grew up right here. Show you something else too. Mom's not here right now, but all of my old friends will recognize the barn. <laughs> we did some crazy things in that barn as kids. Sorry, mom, but she made it. She survived. Anyway, let's get to it. So starting off, um, we have a little issue here. There's no power on pin 16 on the DLC. Uh, there's no power on his cigarette lighter, the key on cigarette lighter that's unplugged right now. Um, he's got an auxiliary one. You see this is an RV, so the top one is hot all the time. This lower port is hot with the key on. So for now, I just jumped power from the hot all the time to the hot with the key on, which powered up my data link connector, and then we should be able to communicate with this. We will attack that at another time. Fuse is good for that circuit. Not sure what's going on there, but uh, yeah, let's see if we can talk to this thing now. I doubt it's gonna have an automatic VIN read. Oh, it did, all right, sweet. Diagnostics. Maybe maybe I'll do a screen recorder for you guys. Let's just see how this goes. Try to keep this video simple. It's a 2001 Ford E350. So he's got some stuff unplugged, the mass airflow and the intake air temp sensor. I believe he has those unplugged right now. So P0300 and a P0302. So cylinder two, misfire. Um, let's look at our mode 6 data on this. So he's got two not completed. I wonder if he had the battery disconnected on this. These readiness monitors. Mode 6 is what I want. These older Fords, this is how you got your misfire data. Um, you couldn't view it on regular scan data. Let's see what we have here. There we go. Is this a 10 cylinder? It might be. This looks a little different than what I'm used to. It's the one that failed. I want like a number to show me the other cylinders. I'm not really sure what I'm looking at here. See the 10 and 0, 0, 0, 0, 0D, 10 and 0, 0, 0, 0. So the zeros are good. I'm not sure I'm reading this right. Cylinder 2 has a number. Cylinder 3 has a number. It says 041. Cylinder 4 says 13A. Cylinder 6 is... 027 cylinder 10 is 24 D I, I think that might be misfire numbers let me see these just look different than what I've seen before on other scan tools but I think that's why you have a random because it's showing numbers on these other cylinders on cylinder 10 cylinder 6 cylinder 4 cylinder 3 and cylinder 2 it's just the coding of these numbers are just weird to me cylinder 2 being the worst I'm just not sure how to uh, decipher those numbers, but we'll keep that in mind. We're going to attack cylinder two first. Let's do this power balance, see how it does. You don't feel a misfire initially. We'll do a little brake torque here in reverse. Definitely, definitely feel it under load. Good at idle. Yeah, this is classic secondary ignition. I'm not sure this power balance test is gonna help me because the uh, engine's not misfiring at idle. Let's just see what, what this gives me. Let's do a brake torque in reverse.
dips right here is what I'm looking at. Numbers up top are coming and going. It's kind of hard to see them. That's cylinder two. Showing me some on cylinder four as well. Cylinder two's got the most. There, cylinder two, pretty bad. Cylinder two, and then cylinder four. That's why we have a 300 code in here. Multiple cylinders. Cylinder two is the dead one, like the one that's hitting all the time. And this one's cylinder, let's see, cylinder four, cylinder eight, showing a couple. And then what's next to cylinder? Let's see, that one's seven. Cylinder two, that's the one we're gonna look at with the U-scope. Pretty straightforward so far. Pretty cool power balance test, I like that. This is the Phoenix Light for you guys wondering. I don't leave home without this. This, this, this thing comes with me everywhere. All right. Cylinder two, so Ford's, shoot. Of course it's gonna be one way up there under the hood. I believe if this is a 10 cylinder, I believe that it is be one, two, three, four, five on this side, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on this side, I think. So it'd be the second one up there. I think. Alright, without my son being here and um, having really one hand, I can't show you all of this live as far as all my connections go. Uh, this is cylinder number one that I'm looking at. This is a multi-strike ignition system. It fires three times. Uh, at idle and low speed, that's why you see three different spikes here. I uh, figured I'd start with cylinder one, um, and we can maybe, let's zoom in on that just a little bit more. I'm just gonna change my scale here just a little bit. Right to my voltage level, I wanna change my time base. Yeah, I like that, that's, that's pretty good right there. That's a pretty, that's actually a really nice looking waveform. Um, I just have this little paddle probe down there laying next to the coil. I'll kind of show you guys that in a minute. Let me see if I can get to cylinder two. That's cylinder one. Just using this guy right here. All right. Let's see if we can grab a cylinder two. That is cylinder two. I really want to look at this guy with a little bit of a brake torque. Your snap throttle is going to be key. Let's see if we can catch. And there's one right there. That's secondary right there. Perfect. This is a secondary problem. Watch that first spike. Right there. Right there. Let's zoom in on this just a little bit more for you guys. Time base wise. Watch that first spike. Watch like right in here. Bam. Watch it again. Right there. So that, th this could actually be a bad plug. It could be a bad coil. It could be a bad boot. Or it's jumping outside of the boot. Any one of the three. Uh, just given location of this, it, this is really about telling my friend what cylinder and what he needs to do. I am totally fine with him changing the coil, the boot, and the plug on cylinder number two. You see that right there? That's a beautiful picture. I mean, this is this is done. I'm sure, we could go a lot further with this and move coils, move the plug, but that is a classic, classic secondary ignition misfire. Watch it a few more times. There you go. That spark is finding its way outside the combustion chamber is what it looks like to me. Leakage, again, that can be coil, arcing, it can be the boot, it can be the plug. What I normally would do is swap the coil, see if it moves with the coil, swap the plug, see if it moves with the plug, those kind of things. That's not happening here, not easily. Um, so, 
let's let's take a look at a few of the other cylinders and make sure that those ones um, look okay too. That's bad. Let me let me jump back to cylinder one again with this same time base. Just laying this probe next to the coil, right? We're picking up the impulses of the ignition coil. I apologize for the real crappy camera work and locations. This is cylinder one. And that's just that first arc we're looking at. I'm on a time base where we're not seeing all three right now because I'm really zoomed in on it. That looks great. That looks great. Let's go back to the scanner real quick. Let's see our power balance test. Yeah, I mean, that's primarily cylinder two on that. You see these other cylinders would be um, the other main one that has multiple hits. Like this one only has one. Um, this one has like maybe two, but this one has a bunch. And that is cylinder what? Cylinder four, cylinder four. So the firing order on this is important to me because companion cylinders, they can they can um, uh, misidentify. So I'm wondering if four is a companion cylinder. Uh, let me double check the firing order and then I'll tell you here. Okay, so I can't show you my screen at the same time. I, I miss Caleb right now, but um, here is the, the layout of the engine. Here's front of the engine. And so it would sit, right, it would sit that way. We were messing with cylinders one and two on the passenger side. And it's one, two, three, four, five. This is a 10 cylinder, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 on the other side. What you do once you have the firing order, which is this up here, one, six, five, 10, two, seven, three, eight, four, nine, what you do is you split it in half and put the, the second half below the first half. And those are your companion cylinders. So one, seven, six, three, five, eight, four and 10, and two and nine. I thought two and four were companion. They are not. Um, so we definitely want to look at cylinder four as well. Just given what our our um, fire balance test is showing us, pretty tough to pick those out on the camera. Should have did a screen recording for you guys. I'm sorry. Um, but you can get, this is why you're getting a P0300 code too, the random misfire, because the computer has a hard time picking them out. Clearly it can pick out number two. Number two has a secondary problem. We've already identified that. I really just wanna look at the number four and then we'll make the call. Um, no reason to go through all of these. I'm gonna have a hard time doing so to begin with. Um, I like starting with cylinder number two for my friend and uh, telling him to do the coil, the plug, the boot, right? The boot and the coil are one piece. So do one coil, one plug to start with. This only has 30,000 30, miles on it. Uh, no reason to do all 10 right now. Just in how much of a pain in the ass it would be to, to change all these plugs. Um, I wouldn't do it if it was my car either. Um, but let's look at cylinder four. So same bank. I'm going to go on the passenger side and grab that cylinder. See what cylinder four looks like. This will actually be a really nice shot for you guys because I can see the coils much better. You can see what I'm doing. Um, all we do is place this little paddle probe right over top of the coil itself. That's, coil, that's cylinder number five. And then this is cylinder number four right here. So I'll show you guys that down on the scope, starting with cylinder, actually we don't care about five. Let's just go right to four, because our battery's getting weak. Just watch number four for a little bit. Let's move this around and get the highest KV reading. Flip this over. Right there, that looks great. Very impressed with the battery life of this U scope. I haven't had it plugged in, and man, it's been sitting in my garage for it could be two years, and I haven't charged it. I think it's time to charge it. This looks pretty good. I'd like to do some brake torques. Let me do that real quick. We'll kind of watch that. So I got it rigged up. I think we can. Snap throttle testing is always best. Bit of a brake torque as well. Dead miss, dead miss. I, I can feel it. it the waveform's fine though. I 
I don't mind that at all. Not worried about any of the other cylinders right now. We're going after cylinder two only. Let's see if I can get that back on there one more time and show you some snap throttle testing. Sweet. I was able to get that from back here easier than uh, from up front. All right, let's see what that looks like. Cylinder two, snap throttle. Every time. That's wonderful. See how well, when you snap the throttle, you're increasing combustion pressures and any secondary ignition problem you have is going to be much more pronounced every time every time i snap and here's a brake torque now yeah man absolutely absolutely and ideally if you were doing a complete diagnosis on this, what you'd want to do is you'd want to put this paddle probe on every single cylinder and do your snap throttle testing. I'm, I'm comfortable with this as far as a neighbor job thing goes, you know? And I'm also comfortable with it as far as my power balance test goes. Right, I've confirmed the number four, which has the most misfires right here, other than the number two, is not misfiring. Number two cylinder. No problem at all. Number two cylinder, absolutely, 100%. We're gonna do a coil and a plug on that cylinder and we will go from there. Let's, uh, hey, my mom's my mom's home. Let's let's go say hi to mom real quick. Hey, Grammy. I'm not, you're not videoing me. I am, as you see the phone is in my hand. Hi. You wanna tell us about how you feeling? I just told everyone about your, your, your cancer again. Yeah, mom has multiple myeloma and she's five years in battling this thing and she's doing good. She walks with a cane now, her legs are a little weak, but other than that, she's doing good. So hi. say hi to my mom and I, I filmed down back real quick and showed everyone the barn. <laughs> That's for all my animals. I'm, I'm really, no, I was talking about <laughs> What you dealt with with us as oh, kids oh it went from yeah yeah you're right so so uh, so now it takes care of feral cats <laughs> yeah. sorry about the barn mom it's okay we were horrible we weren't that bad no you weren't you always had a good heart yeah and god redeemed it all god redeemed it all yes he did <laughs> thanks mom see you later Bye. so what you guys think pretty cool huh um, nice and easy. Uh, the, the tools I was using, not expensive. Get yourself a little U scope. I think that the the kit for that's like four hundred dollars. The um, the Phoenix light is around seven hundred or eight hundred dollars, and uh, I get that all the time. Oh, Dan, you use all this expensive equipment. We can't afford it, and you know those are affordable tools. Those are ones, honestly. You don't want to leave home without it when you know how to do this stuff. You need to have some type of diagnostic tools with you, especially when you drive older cars like us mechanic types do. And so, yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Uh, I think what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to go through some of these other cylinders and just make sure I don't see anything else. And hope you guys like that. Nice, quick, easy one. If you're looking for these tools, I do have them. They're affiliate links. They're in the description of this video. And uh, all of our revenue that we earn from AES Wave, where you'll find the U-Scope, that is being donated to a tool grant. Um, and uh, the Top Don Phoenix, I think they have that too. I'm not totally sure. I think they have the Phoenix Light. The Phoenix Light 2 is listed on their site as well. So thank you guys. Appreciate the support. Um, I appreciate all of your viewership and all of the shares. And... Um, I just couldn't do this without you and you know honestly because of you guys I showed you guys the front porch and roof and stuff I put on my mom's house and that's because of you guys so I have you to thank thank you guys see you next time okay last little piece here guys um, this fuse for the cigarette lighter and data link connector you see it's it's this one it's fuse 23 it's lit on that side and it's lit on that side um, but it's not powering up anywhere else, but check this out. This is why you always pull fuses. Don't just rely on, on the voltage readings. Look real close, and that pin is pushed in on the right side. Let's see if I can zoom in on that for you. 
So it's never making contact with the fuse, which is why we don't have power. The pin is pushed in all the way to the right. Can't see the metal terminal, it's down inside there. So we'll push that back in, we should be good to go. So last piece is I'm sitting here with my my neighbor. Um, I asked him, I was like, I hope your brake cables work because I set the parking brake. And he told me he never uses it. So maybe a tip to us in garages, you know, you get into a customer's car and you see that the parking brake is not set, you might not want to set it because we. I might have just screwed up your lane. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, all right. That's good. You should use this, man. It keeps your rear brakes adjusted properly when you use your, when you use your parking brake. Well, now that you've done it, I won't be so afraid to. <laughs> I, I, I would use it. You're in a big old camper, man. But yeah, Remember, just Remember, I got this for free. I know. So. I love it. I love it. You did good, man. You did good. Oh, well, one last piece, too, is as Lane and I were talking, um, this is the engine that is known for pulling threads out of the cylinder head when you change the spark plugs. And that's the other reason we are only doing the one cylinder for right now. We are not doing the rest of them. Uh, that is uh, uh, my advice to him. And, you know, keep a couple coils with you. I'll give you a little Bluetooth scan tool. So a uh, little thanks here, shout out to um, Blue Driver. I have a few of these. I'm gonna give one to my, to my friend here. I'll show it to you in a second. I don't have one with me. So I do have them at home. Again, special thanks to Blue Driver for hooking me up with these. I'm giving one to my neighbor.